eats not just calories, food is information. It talks to your DNA and tells it what to do. The most potent force to change your environment, to change your health and your entire world actually lies with your fork. Those are the words of Dr. Mark Amen. My name is Nolani Fasho. I'm coming to you live from Union Television. And celebrating the World Diabetes Day. What are the things that we need to know about diabetes? In January 11, 1922, the 14-year-old Leonard Thompson became the first person to receive an insulin injection as treatment for diabetes. And within 24 hours, the dying sickly child with increased high levels of blood sugar became so normalized, so, so much better health-wise. In less than 24 hours, his sugar level became normalized. And prior to that, people with type 1 diabetes, they did not survive for a few weeks after or months uh, after the uh, diagnosis. Of the disease. So what is diabetes really? And research reveals that over half a million, about five, uh, less half a million, half a billion people, like five to seven billion people, like, like between the ages 20 to 79 years, are living with diabetes. Everyone in some persons is living with diabetes. And the number is predicted to increase to 643 million by 2030 to 783 million by 2045. In fact, research is revealing that one in two persons uh, do not even know that they have diabetes. Likely do have it, but they don't even know. So what is diabetes? It is derived from the Greek word diabetes, which means siphon, to pass through, and the Latin word mellitus, which means sweet. And the seventh century, they, they usually call it the, the, the peace and evil. So diabetes, it's a chronic fatal disease in which the body cannot produce insulin or cannot properly use insulin as it should. And so diabetes, it leads to, you know, high sugar levels. You have high sugar levels, which in turn begins to damage organs and blood vessels. Now the body needs insulin to regulate sugar. We understand that sugar is the energy, is the fuel that the human body uses. Like, okay, if you want to run your generator, you're usually running on gas or you're running on diesel. But then for the human body, the blood needs glucose and it carries that glucose to every part of the body. The legs, the muscles need glucose so we can be strong, we can move. The brain cells need glucose so that we can concentrate and realize that when you're hungry, you've not taken food, you may begin to be erratic, you can concentrate, you can, because glucose is reduced. Every part of the body feeds on glucose, but you need portion control. In fact, that is the first dietary management of diabetes. You need to know how you're eating. Quantity is the first cue. Very, very important. What quantity of meal are you taking part time? The second thing, let's move quickly, is the quality of your diet. Number one, it must be balanced. You must always take protein with your meals. And it mustn't be more than your carbohydrates. Now, balanced diet is the first thing. The second thing is that the quality of your meal, especially of your carbohydrates, it must be the, 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 the unrefined carbs. You do more of um, natural foods. Less processed, the better. Then you, have, you need a lot of fibers. Every meal you take, yam, porridge, rice, you must have level of veggies going with it. If you take all these fries, all these uh, junks, you would have a whole lot of sugar rush into your bloodstream and um, it will help you. And the last part of the QQT is the tea, that is the timing. You must eat regular meals. Breakfast between 6 a.m. to 8 a.m., Lunch between 12 p.m. to 2 p.m. Dinner between 6 p.m. to 7, 7.30 at most. And if you're in Lagos, Nigeria, <laughs> you have to find a way around it. Do not exceed 8 p.m. No matter the traffic. Very, very important. So the timing of the meals matter. Now the in-between meals or snack intakes like cucumbers, uh, you know, uh, uh, crackers, nuts, it can come in. Uh, probably around 11 
probably around uh, three, uh, probably around, uh, you know, that's when you have the late night. You could have some late night snacks. Um, part of the snacks you need a lot is yogurt. You need unsweetened yogurt. You need uh, fruits, especially cucumber. Cucumber is your number one fruit that you need. Your garden eggs, that's another good one. Carrots, we have to be careful with the intake of carrots. Then you could do apple too. Again, you have to be careful. It mustn't be big. It has to be make sure your dietitian gives you the measure that is necessary. Then um, you can do um, other fruits uh, like uh, avocado pear. Uh, fruits that have a whole lot of fibers and then are very necessary. Now, let me give us one caution. All these issues of, oh, I'm diabetic, so I can't have this food again. I can't have that food again. It is not true. You can enjoy because this thing brings a lot of danger to the human body. You begin to suffer from micronutrient deficiency because every food is unique. What you need to do is about the QQT, the quantity of that food you are eating, the quality of the food you are eating, and the timing of that meal. So do not restrict yourself. Have your meals planned and you know, you can reach out to your qualified professional to help you out. All right, so I would end this way. Diabetes is not a death sentence. Diabetes may not be curable for now. It can be managed with diet, with good lifestyle, with exercise, especially type 2 diabetes. The more you exercise, the more you help your body cells to be able to pick up the sugars and utilize it. So that's all we'll be having. Stay with us as we move to the next segment. Hospital Squad, I remain to learn fashion. Coming to you live from Union Television. Stay tuned. Welcome you to um, Onyx Show. So this is Hospital Square, a segment of Onyx Show where we get to, you know, speak with our professionals, our knowledgeable medical practitioners who are able to shed light on a whole lot of um, issues that a large number of people in, the, in our environment are, you know, dealing with, you know, to help the public, you know, just for public good. So welcome you afresh and we appreciate you for squeezing out that time for us out of your busy schedule. You know how busy you are, seeing patients all day and all of that. We really, really appreciate you. So over to you, Chris. Thank you for having me. All right, so um, Dr. Ikido is a highly qualified medical professional with a deep focus on endocrinology, diabetes and metabolism. She holds a bachelor's degree in medicine and surgery MBBS from the University of Benin and is a fellow of the West African College of Physicians, FWACP. She's also a member of the professional organizations such as Endocrine and Metabolism. Sorry, she's also a member of professional organizations such as Endocrine and Metabolism, uh, 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 Society of Nigeria, EMSON. Diabetes Association of Nigeria, DAN Association of uh, um, Endocrinologists of Nigeria, ACEAN, and she's also a consultant endocrinologist at Iwasan Lagoon Hospitals. Good evening once again, Doctor. I'm very sure it means Iwasan. <laughs> All right, so let me start with this. Uh, Dr. Kido, can you just shed light on what diabetes is? Um, celebrating the World Diabetes uh, Day. There are many con misconceptions. Some will say diabetes is death sentence when the age is as if uh, they have it, it's the end of the world. Uh, but we are aware that you've been managing a lot of patients that have this disease effortlessly. So, can you define it? Can you explain what we need to know about diabetes mellitus? Okay, um, thank you, Talani, for having me on your show. Um, diabetes is not a life sentence or a death sentence. Um, diabetes is just a, it's a chronic condition. 
And just to use layman's terms, just for the sake of our audience who are not um, in the medical field or clinically aligned, diabetes just means that there's too much sugar in the blood and the blood and the body is unable to um, manage this sugar. So the sugar gets um, into places it shouldn't. And as a result, it causes the complications of diabetes. So diabetes is a clinical condition, just to be able to define it, in which the body is unable to metabolize um, glucose. And then this glucose gets in the blood. That's where you have the high blood glucose, where they check and the blood glucose is very high. And um, so it remains in the blood. And um, in the process, the body tries to get, you know, reduce it. And then as a result, you have all the, you have the symptoms of the um, of diabetes that were so common, you know, we know about that, you know, people begin to urinate a lot, they're thirsty, they're drinking lots of um, water. So it's just the body's inability to um, metabolize or to, you know, um, glucose. So glucose is usually our bodies, uh, the food we eat gets broken down into glucose, blood sugar. And this sugar gets you know, transported from the, in the blood to the cells where it is needed for energy. The transporter of um, glucose is insulin. And then there's, um, so the pro diabetes arises as a result, not because of the glucose, but because there's a problem with insulin. Insulin is either not enough or isn't ineffective. So if some people have either, they, they don't produce insulin, or they don't produce enough, or at the site where the insulin should work, it's you know ineffective. There's some resistance, so it causes this sugar that should go into the cell to remain in the blood, and then the body tries to get rid of it. And in doing so, it begins to pass it out, you know, in urine, and then that makes one to begin to urinate more frequently. So they are passing lots of, um, of urine. They become thirsty and they drink lots of water. So it just, it's just a, like a vicious um, cycle. But uh, that's in um, simple terms what diabetes is. There's too much sugar in the, in the, in the body. It just doesn't get where it's supposed to get to. As a result, you know, there's this, um, I call it a toxic cycle that, of course, leading to you know, the acute symptoms or complications and thereafter the chronic complications that we see. Okay. I, I wanted to ask this before you I wanted to ask, um, what are the signs? How do people know? I, I still hear some people talk about the traditional, you will be on the floor and they will be wait to see if hands will gather around. Are there more more than, or what are the signs? How can people know that, okay, I urinated up to five times today, so it means that I have to go check my blood sugar. Is there a way people can know what are the signs of the presence of diabetes in someone's body? So, um, yes, not to discuss the um, non-formal way of um, diagnosing um, diabetes, but nobody usually urinates on, you know, we have more modern ways of passing urine now. Yes, and then it's wait traditional. For, <laughs> used to it's traditional. Back then in the village. Village. Yes. And then wait for, for ants to, to gather. So people, most times people come and say, oh, they notice that they've been passing urine more frequently than mm -hmm. they usually do. And they may sometimes, they may, you know, just try and go, oh, I've been drinking with lots, they think, oh, I'm, I'm doing, you know, water therapy, I'm drinking lots of uh, water, they say water is good. Or um, and um, or so one of the symptoms is that they are urinating more frequently. So if you were passing urine, maybe waking up once or twice at night to pass urine, and then it's like five times, six times, seven times, you are waking up. You know your sleep is interrupted. Um, anybody will take note and say, "Oh, there's uh, something wrong." Mm -hmm. And then, like I said, just because you are passing out urine, you become more thirsty. And then you drink water. So people have people who are like drinking up to three liters of 
of, of water, taking you know pure water sachets, and they're just drinking it. And people may ascribe it all to the weather, and then you know they're always thirsty. Their their mouth is all you know always dry. So those are the symptoms. Those are the simple symptoms. Just increased urination, excessive thirst, and um, drinking lots of um, of water. Some people lose weight. Some people, um, the common as an emergency, so they don't even go through all those um, symptoms for a long time. And, they, and some other people don't just have any symptoms. They just come for a routine check. And they are told that, oh, sugar is 200. I'm like, oh, I didn't, have, I didn't know anything about that. Oh, there's a, there's, sorry, man. there's a particular range of sugar. I mean, I think there's, but you mentioned 200 now. No, I just arbitrarily mentioned 200. Mm -hmm. We will now go to how we do the diagnosis of, okay. of, um, of diabetes. So, uh, like I said, people, some people have symptoms. Let me go on, depending on the type of diabetes, you know, for like um, days to weeks. And then other people, they don't have any symptoms. They're supposed to come for a routine check, maybe pre-employment assessment, maybe coming to do their annual comprehensive, and or maybe came in for another thing, just oh, malaria symptoms, and their sugars, you know, their blood sugar is checked, and you know, it's in a, it's high, and um, so they're like, oh, they now begin to ask questions. Do you understand why I I keep past urine? I'm not thirsty. I wasn't thirsty and all that, but um, the blood sugar is in the um, like is high it's in the diabetic range. So that's how some people are diagnosed. So some people don't have symptoms, don't have the classic symptoms or the classical symptoms. I just want to you know, bring that. So um, yes, the classical symptoms are the, you're passing lots of urine, you're increasingly thirsty, um, drinking lots of water, but there's also a group of people who don't have the symptoms. Of, yeah. and so, you know, and, um, when they check, when they come to the hospital for some other thing or doing a routine screening, like uh, the World Diabetes Day is to raise awareness about diabetes. Mm -hmm. And they say, okay, come and check your, we're going to do free glucose checks. And they check, and they, they check that they, are, they have okay. them high blood sugar. So maybe um, denial, I mean, a lot of people, like, just like um, we talked earlier, people who want to try alternate um, yeah. methods, and then you're like, okay, this is what it is, your sugar is, is you know, so high, come in, come for admission, and, you know, they, they, they say no, or they have developed, you know, a non-healing um, ulcer, and you want to, at the time you see them, you know, you're able to maybe conservatively manage that, um, that ulcer, but, you know, they want to try alternate methods or means, and they go out, and then they come back, and now they have to have, you know, it's gone so bad, and they have to have that limp. Um, amputated. So those are some of the um, um, uh, stories or, or um, experiences. Um, yes, instances of um, of you know how you see your patients and you know you see them this way it can be managed and then they like oh no let me try alternative methods and they go and they come back and they have to lose that that limb. It's not easy to lose a limb. Um, there's loss of that limb, you now become dependent on people, you now have to get, you know, an artificial one that's also costly Very and all that. So, um, well, thank so you. That, those are some of the, of the stories. <laughs> I think people need to know that by the time they get to that stage, uh, they should listen to their yeah. medical practitioners. It is safer so to without people. one limb and be alive. You know, that's yes. the purpose of the of the world diabetes day is that nobody we should, you know, prevent diabetes and prevent the complications mm. of diabetes. So we don't want to get to that extreme um, end. Uh, all right. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dr. Ekido. Um, we really had a nice time, like she said, and we will definitely, definitely reach out to you again. Yes. Again. So, thank you very thank much. Thank you for having me. We appreciate you, Ma. All right. Thank you. Enjoy All your right. evening, Ma. And if there is anything I gained from this discussion, like 
what were the major things? Well, the major thing I got from this is that it can be managed. Okay. It can be managed. And people that want to go for alternate cures, alternate medicines, well, I don't see that giving the best cure. Be careful. Yes, exactly. You should be careful. Um, for me, I would say over and over again that this is is not a death sentence. Having it doesn't mean the whole world is ending for you. Many people manage diabetes and they live to their seventies. All you need to do is to have a physician, get a registered dietitian. It wouldn't make sense because you have to manage your dietary intakes. You know, you could even have a fitness person because exercise is very, very important. If you're able to do all of that, you could manage it. But like you say, like like the you know they always say, and the saying goes that prevention is better than cure. It is better if you know it runs in your lineage. You had one great grandfather that just went blind, and they didn't know why he went blind. Remember, one of the complications of diabetes is retinopathy, that is pathology of the retina. You could try to find out. Apart from that, did Baba have any other issue? Was he always you were just to find out and then go for screening? And we immediately we know that there are traces. Then you have to be careful. You can't be taking bottles of coke every day. But although we know that it's not necessarily about the bottles of coke, really. Absolutely. Yes, that is another different story for another time. But you should be careful with you, you know, if you have sugar tendencies, you, you shouldn't, you know, bother around uh, frivolous use. Of loose sugars shouldn't bother around being overweight to eat the burgers and the fries and just an ice cream on the shawarma you just eat anyhow and then your body is getting sick and sicker even though you look like a, a big man or a big woman because in Africa we believe when you are fat when you're eating and you're fat and there's sign of good living <laughs> and that isn't true so um I hope you we, we hope you enjoyed uh, this little uh, discussion we have on diabetes and like uh, my co-presenter said we are still coming back this is not all we're going to have so stay tuned stay glued to Lumen Television you can follow us at Lumen Television 1 on YouTube Instagram Lumen Television on Facebook TikTok and at Union Television oh sorry beg your pardon at Union underscore TV1 on Twitter and uh, I remain Fashion with you Tolani and and I am Musa Christopher. Bye for now.